Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel, County for Real. And today I have, um, I'm just eating a little, some uh, greens. Mm-hmm. Mm. So good. I have some greens that I made before I get started on my, um, lesson for the day. Mm. Mm. And I also have my um, with my probiotic. I usually drink this all the time, and it's only um seven grams of sugar. Mhm. Mm and real fruit, yogurt smoothie, probiotic, yogurt smoothie, uh, probiotic. And um, so it's real good. And my greens, I made these. Nothing like some fresh greens. I put a little dressing on them. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Mm -mm -mm. Very good. And uh, see, greens, I put a little dressing on them. A little salt and pepper. So good. And uh, greens are healthy for you. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Uh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, very good. And these usually come four in a pack, but, um, I usually get a couple of packs of them. Sometimes two, sometimes three. Mm hmm Very good. Yes. Very good. Okay, let me get started. Okay. Okay. First items I want to talk about are, okay. I want to talk about, uh, I'm going to move a little bit away from the accounting equation for a minute, but we always know, we all, we all know that, I mean, well, we should know that, uh, the, um, accounting equation, the assets equals liabilities plus on his equity. So that's what's on the balance sheet. And then we have the, um, income statement that's, uh, revenues minus expenses. But today, today, I want to move away a little bit and, Let's talk about uh, corporate culture, uh, management responsibilities, also accounting concepts, and uh, technological trends within the organization. And what type of corporate culture are you creating? So it's uh, let's talk uh, corporate co corporate culture. So, in other words, and here I have. Just a few uh, uh, corporations that that have they have built a strong trusting brand. We have Walmart, Kmart, Target, Amazon, Apple, Dell. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, uh, Costco's, McDonald's, um, uh, Comcast, AT and T, Sprint, and T Mobile. Uh, these are just a few. Uh, corporations that build strong brands. Uh, yes, we say uh, you see Walmart. Walmart. So I said Walmart is American. Walmart is an American multinational retail corporation that operates a chain of uh, hypermarkets, discount department stores, and grocery chains. Grocery chains. So that's Walmart. So these are some of the big name brands. Uh, corporations, so corporate organizations. Yeah, so we have, uh, these are some of the big names, so. And then I have, uh, in other words, first of all, let's define culture. Culture uh, represents the shared experiences, uh, stories, beliefs, norms, 
Um, the, it may be the way people dress, the way people, the way people talk, the way people walk, your religion. Um, so that that comes with uh, your culture. So in other words, what type of culture are you creating uh, in your organization? So normal culture can be positive and normal culture to certain organizations uh, could be negative. So in other words, if you're creating, basically it's, it's it has to do with the environment too within your uh, organization. So in other words, if you you have a corporate, uh, if you're creating a corporate culture where where uh, mistakes uh, happen all the time, or everybody's nasty to one another, uh, or you you're not running an ethical or or morally sound uh, corporate environment. Uh, in other words, uh, you you know. They, uh, your employees are nasty to one another. They're fighting one another sometimes, or or they lying, you know, lying about issues that, you know, issues that are important uh, within your organization and uh, to the public. And um, so, what kind of corporate uh, environment, corporate culture are you uh, creating? So. It's, um, you want to look at, you know, ethical behavior. Do uh, your corporation represent uh, ethical, positive ethical behavior? Uh, do employees respect one another? What kind of culture are you creating in your organization? Uh, what, what behaviors, what values, what beliefs do you follow? Uh, uh, do, do the employees and uh, managers and everybody within the organization respect one another? Are you, are you concentrating on leading, innovating, and succeeding? So managers have to make sure that the organization is, um, in other words, everybody's on point with one another. Teams, teams are, um, in other words, you're creating positive teams that uh, has uh, the organization's positive goals in mind. In other words, what are your goals? What do you want to be doing? What does your corporation want to be doing five years from now? What improvements do you want to make? Uh, what are your goals? What are your uh, aspirations for your organization? Are you looking at, uh, are you benchmarking, looking at other corporations and other organizations and see how uh, they rank within the corporate world? Um, so that's part of your corporate culture. So in other words, your beliefs, your norms. What is no, what is normal behavior in your corporation, in your organization? So you have to create a culture that is positive and trustworthy. In other words, customers, even if you offer a product or even a service, you want customers uh, to trust your organization, trust your corporate organization. Trust that you're going to have a nice product. Your, your product is going to be safe. Your product is going to be, uh, in other words, your product is going to do what it says it's going to do. Say, for instance, uh, Apple Corporation. So Apple has, uh, you know, the Apple iPhones, Apple uh, iPads. So when you purchase an iPad or uh, uh, iPhone, you want to know that it does what it says it's going to do. In other words, you want good, you want great picture quality. You want to be able to check your email. You want to be able to um, uh, whatever you need to do, whatever you you know do with your uh, phone, whatever, whatever. Uh, I guess whatever. Uh, I guess you can say I could say. Um, um, in other words, I want my phone to be. Uh, I could say flexible. I want my phone to be, I want it to stand up to his name. In other words, I want, when Apple uh, sells a product and I purchase it, I want Apple to stand by their name and uh, promise, and they promise to me that that phone or that iPad, that phone or that iPad is going to do exactly what they say it's going to do when I purchase it, especially when I spend uh, my money. Because, you know, those phones cost you about, uh, what, eight? Eight eight hundred, nine hundred to a thousand dollars, 
And um, so I want though I want my iPad or my uh my uh iPhone to do exactly what the company says it's going to do. So in other words, your corporate culture, your shared your shared beliefs, your shared norms. So in other words, basically the definition is saying that you need to share the same beliefs and the same norms within that within that corporation. You can't have uh, some workers uh, thinking that it's all right to come in late, or uh, you know, if they work five days a week, uh, two days a week, they come in when they get ready. But all the rest of the uh, employees, they come in on time, five days a week. So you're not sharing, you're not sharing the norms of that corporation because you, you, you are coming in uh, late every day or late two days a week. My other employees, for years, they come in on time. So eventually they they'll be trying to get rid of you because that is not part of the norm the norm with this organi organization and this corporation is in other words uh you are going to be on time you want to treat each other with respect um uh you want to have um you're going to share your experiences in other words uh what experiences have you brought have you um bought have you brought to this organization what experiences so when you share your experiences that that creates uh, i guess that would create a uh, cohesiveness within the organization so and then uh so that's called corporate culture so let me see if i have any other terms related to corporate so yeah so create so it's very important to create a corporate culture that um, is very positive. In other words, cor your corporate culture is is basically uh, how you um, when you create your corporate culture. How do you make sure that your environment is positive? So you want your you want your corporate culture and your workers and your employees and your managers to work around. An environment that's positive. In other words, you don't want a corporate culture, create a culture where everybody's, some people are lying and stealing and cheating on the uh, company taxes or they're fighting each other, they're arguing and they're just not getting along. You're just not creating a positive culture because that's those types of things will rub off on your product and your services. So create a positive culture. Then when it trickles down to your products and your services, all the, uh, those things will be very important. So, in other words, it says uh, market opportunity analysis when you evaluate. Right, because then when you start evaluating the market opportunities, you will um, see that a lot of companies are... Uh, employees not employees but customers will look at a whole lot customers will look at those type of things you know um uh has has this company been positive has this company been honest no one wants to go out and purchase from a company that is not honest about their products so don't tell me the product is going to do one thing and it, and it doesn't it does something else and i'm spending my money and so though that uh, corporate culture is very important. So it also you can also talk about branding too. In other words, you create a positive corporate culture, you create a positive, reliable, trustworthy brand at the same time. So in other words, you got uh, at the company companies I was talking about, uh, Kmart, Kmart, Target, Amazon, Apple, Dell, Costco, McDonald's. You have Wendy's. We have Comcast, AT and T, Sprint, T Mobile, uh, Walmart. Uh, in other words, uh, yeah, all these companies they have uh, been around for a long time. They have a long-standing, trusting brand. When we buy and we purchase from these brands, we're certain that we're going to get our money's worth. So we're certain that the company is going to um, provide to us what. Uh, they say they're going to provide. So when they, when they, when we trust their brand, then we don't mind spending our money 
and um, we don't mind spending our money to purchase from these uh, trusted brands. So, and then we have uh, managers. So in other words, the managers are within the organization or the corporation. A manager's job is to plan, organize, lead, and control. So uh, planning, they establish a strategy for achieving the goals, organizing, they determine what tasks are to be done and who is to do them. So in other words, they organize, they're organizing their employees. Uh, I have this set of employees over here and on this team. They are going to be handling this type of job. And then I have uh, three or four employees over here. And they are going, they are going to be doing, uh, they're going to be working on this type of assignment. And then leading and controlling. So leading, when they lead, when managers lead, they motivate employees. Motivate employees and they solve conflicts and they direct, direct activities. So control, controlling. Um, also managers, uh, let me put my glasses on. Okay, managers ensure that things are going as they should and they, they monitor the performance. So, and they have, we have a gentleman named Henry Fayo. So he said managers perform four management functions. That's where I got this from. Planning, organizing, leading, controlling. So, then I have, so then I'm going to move over to, uh, let me move to uh, technology. Okay, so I started out with a corporate culture. In other words, first we start out with, uh, in other words, we have our business, we build it our business, we have our, we have our, uh, we have our niche, we have our target market, we have our niche, we have our target market, then we will, then we have uh, where we're going to market our business, where we're going to market, advertise, and promote. We want to do social media marketing. So then we face with uh, building our brand, building our brand, building a trusted brand, so we can satisfy our customers. Then we also want to have in the marketplace. We want to have that competitive advantage. So in other words, what what's stopping you from going to uh, what's stopping you from going to um, going from uh, in other words, you go to uh, Walmart. What gives you the idea to say, hey, I'm going to go to Walmart versus Target versus uh, uh, Kmart? You know what? What gives you the idea to say, hey, oh shoot, I like. Do you like the brands that they provide, or do you like the customer service, or uh, do you like the discounts that they have? What drives you to go to a particular store? So nine times out of ten, you fell in love with the brand over the years because the brand is trusted. It's a brand that you can trust because you've been probably shopping with them for years, and you know, hey, when I when I go to this, in other words, in other words, when I go to Kmart, Walmart, Target. Home Depot uh, or Apple, or when I purchase something from something from either of these, uh, either either of these uh, name brand, big brand retailers, I'm sure that I'm going to get my money's worth, and the product is going to do what it says it's going to do. I'm not going to open a package and it's going to blow up in my face. And um, but if it does, you have a uh, yeah, we have something called strict liability, so companies would be strictly liable. So if you open a package and it blow up in your face, then that's a lawsuit. So, so I'm gonna move to technology. So uh, technology, uh, uh, what are the latest trends in technology? So I have um, latest trends in technology. We have uh, I have a uh, technology trends. We have Uber driverless cars. See technology trends. Mm -hmm. I have Uber driverless cars, uh, 2019. That's when they came out. We have Google driverless cars, October 2015 till till now. I guess they're still using them. And then we have a uh, human augmentation, and that strengthens a uh, person's physical cognitive ability. So in other words, I think human augmentation 
In other words, uh, I have seen those, uh, in other words, when somebody has their arm or leg amputated, so now they can put a bionic arm on and it can move almost just like a real arm. So it's called, I guess that's what they call human augmentation. It strengthens the person's physical cognitive ability. That way they'd be able to move their arm. And then they had wearables. You had a wearable, uh, they have the wearable watches. And then Google has those glasses. And then we have AI, uh, artificial intelligence pro uh, products. We have cloud storage, uh, personal profiling. We also have robotics, robots, augmented reality, virtual, virtual reality. And then they also had the uh, mind reading, uh, like these glasses, mind reading uh, wearables. And also now Amazon has the, uh, I don't know when they started it, but I did my research. Uh, cashier, cashier less Amazon Go stores. Uh, companies like, uh, like uh, DoorDash and Domino's, they have their drones. In other words, if you order something. You order something, the drones may come and deliver your food. And um, yes, because in some college campuses, they was they was trying that out on some college campuses because I saw it on the news. So when uh somebody orders something up in their dorm room, then the drones will come and uh, deliver their food. And then we have self checkout uh at Target stores. And also uh, I don't want to forget the uh. 3D printing, where they can uh, print uh, bi uh, bionic body parts. And, you know, we also have Alexa. Alexa, uh, you can tell Alexa to say, hey, Alexa, play music for me. Uh, talk to Alexa, Alexa, ask or tell her to do something. And Comcast, they also have a lot of great uh, new technological uh, uh, products. And then we have uh, Google Street View, where you can see... You can go on a computer, you can see different streets. If you click, you can see different streets right from your computer. Or you just type in the address, and you can see different streets, street view. And then also we have uh, JIT. This is something we talked about in my class, JIT. Um, just in time, just in time, and having only enough inventory needed over. I uh, don't want to overload your warehouses. So in other words, you uh, have a company, say for instance, my company, uh, as I said yesterday, so this is just in time, JIT. So you have enough inventory, just enough in the warehouse, so you won't overload your warehouses. In other words, if I had my business, uh, Cheryl's Beauty and Barber, and I have my supplies, I don't want to overload my warehouse. I just have enough in my beauty, uh, I have enough of my beauty inventory, so... When I'm sending out my orders and stuff, um, I have just enough to maybe last me for a week or a month or however long I want it. And that way I won't overload my warehouse. And then um, I'll be able to send out my um, my products to my customer just in time, J-I-T. So, and I went over the tech trends. These are the tech trends. The uh, tech trends. So, and then... Uh, let's see what I have next. I went over this here. So this is uh let's talk corp let's talk corporate culture. That's what I've been talking about, corporate culture. So it's very important. So I have Cheryl's Beauty and Bomber Supplies. So it's very important for me in my business to create a positive corporate culture. I want all my employees to get along. Uh, I want to create great products and services for my customers. So the culture and the environment within my organization is very important. So shared beliefs, shared norms, shared stories, shared experiences. Uh, culture, part of your religion. Uh, you, you might have some people uh, working within that corporation. Some of them may be Baptists. Some of them may be, uh, I don't know, Buddhism, Catholic. But if they're working in that same corporate environment, then they have to learn to work together because there's nothing wrong with learning different cultures. So, I mean, African Americans, you might have Caucasians, African Americans, you might have uh, Native Americans, you might have uh, uh, 
you might have uh, I don't know what Jews or whatever type of whatever type of corporate culture you you know environment you're working around. If you can get along, that's very important. Getting along, working together, working in teams, that's how you create that positive corporate culture. Different cultures have to work together to get along. Get along. We know that we're going to have different religions, different beliefs, and all that. So we're all going to have different beliefs, different norms, uh, different religions, different experiences. We come from different backgrounds, so our experiences are going to be different. So just because uh, the next person is not from the same uh, culture as you, then doesn't mean that you have to treat that person bad. So try to get along, working together. And that corporate culture is very important. Positive corporate culture. Now, I took a uh, ethics class back at Strayer College. Well, now Strayer University. So when I got my de degree, I started out, it was Strayer College, but... By the time I graduated, it had turned into Australia University. So I took a class. Uh, I took a class, an ethics class, and the class was so with Dr. Jewell, and he was a very nice professor. So the class I took was ethics, and I, and um, we were talking about. Um, we came across a chapter uh, where they were talking about um, how some companies were like dumping uh, hazardous chemicals. Right in lot, right near people's homes, apartments, houses, or whatever. And you know, so we talked about stuff like that. So that is not a corporate culture that you want to create for your organization. So they were saying because people can get sick now, and then also I heard on the news uh, several times where they had um, where they were dumping uh, some companies would dump. Uh, uh, well, actually, they wouldn't dump nothing, but they were they would uh, they were working, and they was using hazardous uh, chemicals too at the same time, and it was near people's homes and stuff, and people were getting sick, and I think it was near an army base or something one time, but um, so that was that. So corporate culture are very important, positive corporate cultures, and how can you build your brand if you're not creating a positive, ethical, morally sound corporate culture. That's part of your brand. All that is part of your brand. Your culture, your your logos, uh, your employees, your uh, your colors, and your products and your services. Your products and your services. All those are included in your brand. So all those are included in your brand. So to build a positive, ethical, morally sound brand, trustworthy brand, you want to Trust a trustworthy brand because how you gonna pull in customers if your brand is not trusted? So you must have a positive corporate culture. Employees must get along and create a norm. No creative. It's not positive to create a corporate environment where um, uh, uh, you, your company is not, you know, your employee is not getting along and you're cheating people out their money and you're not creating a positive, uh, I would say a, a good quality product. You're not creating a good quality product, but you're creating something that is, uh, I would say, halfway, halfway. It's not up to the uh, marketing standards. And then you're getting, you know, getting your customers' money. So in order to keep on in order for your customers to keep coming back, you want to create a positive corporate culture. Uh, you want to create it, uh, you know, trust. You want to build trust within your uh, employees and your uh, customers, basically within the whole organization. Your managers, your employees, your customers, your suppliers, everybody, everyone should be on one accord. So that's how they go. And this is, uh, then also, after all that, then you have to still think about your books. Once you create all that, then you still have to think about your fa uh, financial statements, your accounting books. Um, you, created a, uh, you created a nice product. You already have your customers, uh, your, your, I guess you would say, long, 
long term, long time customer, you have a nice product, a trusting brand, and you have created your customer list. Uh, you already know, you already basically know your target market. So in other words, you can also segment the market, as I mentioned in my other video. Market segmentation, you can, if you want to target this age group, college students, this age group. So whatever, whatever target market, whatever target market you're aiming for, then that's what you, you know, that's what you do. You, you know, whatever target market you are, if you want one target market, you say, hey, I just want to market my products to a, a college students. So I want uh, ages 20 to 65 or 30 to 70 or whatever group, you know, or you want uh, thin, your products, you want to market to thin people, your products, you want to market to heavier people, you know, uh, so that's how that goes. And uh, this is just right here. Prepaid expenses are assets you get that you get future use from. So in other words, prepaid expenses. We have prepaid expenses. I have prepaid insurance, prepaid rent, prepaid advertising, prepaid legal costs. So all these become um, these become assets because prepaid, all prepaids are assets. So then when I do, when you want to make your journal entry, you want to debit, we debit cash. I mean debit, debit prepaid rent. And credit cash. Debit prepaid rent. See where we debit prepaid rent? And credit uh, cash. Because we paid the rent up for six months. And that was $2,000. And then so that's how they go. Prepaid rent becomes an asset. So when you're looking at your... Uh, when you're looking at your balance sheet. When you're looking at your balance sheet. <coughs> that's when you say... Um, in other words, in other words, when I'm looking at my balance, this is not a balance sheet. This is, in other words, this is a balance sheet. In other words, this is, this is like a problem. So, teacher may say, hey, do a balance sheet. Uh, so when you do a balance sheet, you want to be able to pick out the items that goes on the balance sheet. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So when I, when I look for my assets, well, say for instance, I want to look for my assets. I say uh, I look for my assets, which is cash, office supplies, land. Uh, and I go over here and all these like that. So when I come over here, I look for all my assets, which means cash, office supplies, land. Cash, office supplies, land. And then I come down here to all my uh, all my prepaid 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 expenses, prepaid rent, and prepaid uh, this is prepaid uh, insurance, prepaid insurance, prepaid rent, and prepaid expenses. So these will go on the uh, balance sheet. So this is in other words like a a problem. You say, hey, let me pick out all my assets, and I add all my assets together. See how I check all my assets. I check all my assets and then I come over and I look for my liabilities. So my liabilities would be all my payables, you know, accounts payable, and then I have a uh, note payable. So I just pick out all my uh, liabilities and then I add my liabilities to my owner's equity and it'll come out to, it should equal my assets. So that's how you do it. This is like a problem. So what I did, I listed all the accounts. And so when it's time to uh, make my uh, balance sheet assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So actually, I think I have. So then I line it up like this. I line my balance sheet up like this. So these are all my assets. Then I add them all up. My assets total 183000 See all my assets. And then uh, my liabilities. My liabilities total 120000 so my liabilities are 120000 And then I'll add my liabilities to my owner's equity. I add my liabilities to my total liabilities and add it to my owner's equity. This is what I get. My total owner's equity, 183000 which will match my assets, 183000 So that's how that goes. So that's, that's a balance sheet. Mm -hmm. So that's just what I made up. See, so in other words, that's the ending. So this is like, this is the one 
you just, you know, when you get a problem, you just have to make sure you pick out what you need. So in other words, you won't pick out no expenses. When you're looking for assets, equal liabilities, personal equity, you know, <clears throat> you won't look for the expenses. Because those goes on the in that is what goes on the income statement. So because we have a uh, depreciation expense, utilities expense, and we have advertising expense. So we won't pick those because they go on the income statement. So you just want to pick out all your assets equals your liabilities plus on his equity. And you know what I mean? All the liabilities plus on his equity. When you add them two together, they're supposed to equal the same amount. They come to the same total of your assets. So that's how they go. So that, and then I have, uh, this is a couple of, uh, a few T accounts and uh, general entries. So we have uh, sold cable service to customers on account. Excuse me. They sold uh, cable service to customers on account. So we sold, sold cable service to customers on account. So if you sell something, yeah, that's going to increase cash. Selling something and receiving uh, revenue or uh, income, uh, it, uh, that's $23,000. And then accounts payable. Accounts payable is supposed to be $23,000. See, on account, $23,000. So, so, uh, so cable service to customers on account. Uh, twenty-three thousand or two thousand three hundred. That's two thousand three hundred. The comma in the wrong place. So cable okay, service to customers on account. So cable okay, service to customers on account. So then we have our general entry, debit cash, we debit cash and credit accounts payable. Mm -hmm. So. And then we have uh, received 500 for cable TV service performed for customers. So we received received 500 for cable service preferred for uh, preferred for customers. So in other words, we received 500. So we received 500. We want to debit cash and then uh, credit service revenue. And then we have our journal journal entry. We want to debit cash. And credit service revenue. And then we pay some employees. So when we pay our employees, that's an expense that was paid. So when you pay your employees, it's going to have to come out of cash at the same time. So we pay some employees. So in other words, paid employees, expenses. Uh, so when we pay our expenses, we debit the expense account. Uh, 1300 and 1300 comes out of cash, and then we have uh, it's our journal entry up here, and it's our ledger entry. So, uh, journal entry when a debit uh, salary expenses 1300 and credit cash 1300. So, we paid employees uh, the salary, mm -hmm. and this is a uh, income statement. And then see on the income statement is I when I did a balance sheet, I did the same thing. So in other words, in other words, if you have a problem, you have to pick out, in other words, this is an income statement. Revenues minus expenses equal net income. So we had to do we pick out uh all our revenues. We don't want to pick out cash because cash goes on the balance sheet. Sales revenue. So we will pick sales revenue. We will pick sales revenue and interest revenue. Uh, we would pick uh, any other revenues. Oh, here go legal service revenue. We would pick legal service revenue. So we would definitely pick that. And then we would go, then we would minus the expenses also. All the expenses that we would pick, we would pick uh, here go, uh, supplies expense. Mm -hmm. Supplies expense. We would pick some expenses over here. Salary expense, interest expense. Depreciation expense. Uh, we would pick, uh, yep, depreciation expense. And we would just pick out the right ones that goes, in other words, we say rev uh, revenues minus expenses. So then I give us our net income. So we take it all out, we pick our revenues out of here. We start out over here with um, 
entrance revenue. We know entrance revenue. And that's how we would pick our own take them out. And this is actually how it would go. So then when we set up our income statement, we just set it up like this. We got our revenues, we got our sales revenue, interest revenue, legal revenue. And then once you add that, we got uh two hundred and nineteen thousand dollars. Two hundred nineteen thousand. Okay, how to see that? Two hundred nineteen thousand revenue. See, add all our revenues up, which would be two hundred nineteen thousand for our revenue. And then we come down here. These are all the expenses. So expenses total. Expenses expenses total fifty thousand. So we minus 50000 from 219000 which are our uh, revenues. And then that's where we get our uh, net income, 169000 See? Net income, 169000 So that's the uh, income statement. Revenues, revenues minus expenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's our net income, right? That income was one hundred sixty nine thousand. Okay, and then I have um, so as I said, uh, my company is Cheryl's Beauty and Barber. Uh, I have um, in other words, I had invested forty thousand. So, in my business when I first started my business, so I invested forty thousand. Um. This is my journal entry, and this is my ledger at the bottom. So, in other words, if I invested, I want to debit cash forty thousand, and then I'm going to credit on the equity. Credit on the equity forty thousand. So, this is my business, Cheryl Beauty and Barber, and then I have uh, my journal entry, debit cash forty thousand, credit on the equity. That's the journal entry, and that's the uh, ledger entry. So we got the ledger, the ledger right here. Ledger entry and your uh, journal entry. So in other words, I have Cheryl's Beauty and Barber. As I said when I was talking earlier about corporate culture. Now, I have a Beauty and Barber LLC. I want to create a positive uh, corporate culture. And I want to create a uh, strong trusting brand. Yep. I want to create a positive corporate, corporate culture. Culture. And I want to create a strong, positive uh, company brand. I want my customers to keep coming back. I don't want my customers to come in my my business. I don't want my customers to come in my business and know that everything is all screwed up very well. And then they feel like they don't want to come back. So we want to create a positive corporate culture, strong, trusting brand. Uh, you just want to, you want to have team, you know, want to you want to have positive teamwork. You want to create a, a total quality management. You want to be total quality management means all uh, certain teams are working together to, to build that trust, that cohesiveness within the organization. So total quality. You want to create a quality product. You want to create a quality environment. Uh, you want custom, you want um employees to get along. You want customers to get along when they come in the store. You don't want to hire nobody when they come in. They argue with the customers all the time. and um, Those are the types of things that you try to get around. So then I have uh, paid uh, $32,000 for transmitted equipment. So in other words, anytime you pay something, you know it's going to be a credit to cash. See? Paid thirty-two thousand for transmitting equipment. So in other words, some type of transmitting equipment. If you pay that, you still get an asset, which is equipment. So that's thirty-two thousand. So equipment thirty-two thousand, which is an asset, and it came out of cash thirty-two thousand. So transmitting equipment. And um, you see the journal entry. Journal entry is transmitting equipment. I want to debit. Transmitted equipment thirty-two thousand, and uh, credit cash thirty-two thousand because it had to come out the cash account. Mm -hmm. 
So, and then I have uh, purchase office supplies for the camp. So I have office debit office supplies four hundred, and credit account payable four hundred. Office supplies on the camp. So uh, then you see the journal entry at the bottom, and a uh, journal entry at the top, and ledger at the bottom. So accounts payable, we want to credit accounts payable four hundred, and debit. So office office supplies becomes an asset once you purchase it. Uh, I put it in the books on the books as an asset. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and then I have uh, my company. I borrowed twenty five thousand from the bank and I signed a note payable. Borrowed borrowed uh twenty five thousand from the bank, so I'm gonna debit my cash account because that's gonna be money going into my cash. And note payable, I'm gonna credit note payable. And so that's my uh journal journal entry up here is my ledger entry. So my journal entry is uh. On my debit cash, twenty five thousand, and credit no payable. Yep. So that's that one. And I paid the following expenses. So on my debit, I want to debit my expense account since they were paid, and credit my cash because it's coming out the cash account. Uh huh. So in other words, uh, pay the following cash expenses. Pay the following cash expenses. So look, I want to debit. My expense account, eighteen hundred, and credit cash because it's coming out the cash account, eighteen hundred. And this is my uh, journal entry. Debit ex my expenses, uh, eighteen hundred, and credit cash, eighteen hundred because it's coming out the cash account. And then I have the last, oh, receive cash on account. So I receive cash on account. I want to credit uh I want debit cash and credit accounts uh receivable eleven hundred receive cash on account so that's my journal entry and then my ledger entry at the bottom so cash debit cash eleven hundred and credit uh accounts receivable eleven hundred so receive cash on account. So accounts receivable. So when you, when you receive cash on account, that's accounts receivable. But you can also, uh, in other words, somebody came in my business and they ordered some products and they paid accounts receivable. I mean, they created accounts receivable. They paid me. I received the money from them. Uh, accounts receivable money came back to me. But when they signed, when they first initially signed. I guess signed the paperwork and they ordered some stuff or they came in. They created accounts payable. That means they had to uh I think accounts payable would have went on my books. I still would have put the accounts payable on my books. But once I started receiving it from them, it turned into accounts receivable. And receive six hundred dollar a six hundred dollar bill, uh utility expense that would be paid in the near future. So I have my journal entry, uh, $600 uh, expense, debit, debit expense account, $600, and credit my cash account, $600. So in other words, a $600 bill that will be paid later on. So it's still an expense. So I want to debit my expense uh, account and credit my cash. And then the last one I have... Is paid a hundred dollars of the account payable created in transaction D. So in other words, pay the account payable and the other transaction. So in other words, initially started out at four hundred. But when you create an account payable, you always you increase the account payable. As I said in my previous, when I was you know doing my board presentation, when you create accounts payable, uh, increasing that it will it will be a credit on the right hand side. It will be a credit. So it started out with accounts uh, payable four hundred, but since since a hundred dollars was paid on the account payable, we want to debit account payable hundred dollars, and then I still want to take the hundred dollars out of the cash account. So that's the uh, uh, just the journal, that's the ledger entry, and this the journal entry up here. See, so accounts payable one hundred debit and credit cash one hundred. 
So that's how they go. Paid a hundred dollars on the account payable. Okay, so and at the bottom I put the corporate corporations accounts payable. So in other words, when you go in your corporate books, I, I assume that uh, you still have to keep account of uh, when you go in your corporate books. I never work for a corporation, but I assume that you know they, you know they be. I assume they probably do that the same way. Uh, you still, they still will have their um, income. They still have to do the income statement, balance sheet, statement of owners equity. Um, so when they do that, they have to still, you know, when it's time to do the accounting uh, books, the accountants, the CPAs, uh, pri pri probably. Probably private accountants, uh, work, they probably work for corporations, I guess. Uh, I guess they still probably, they definitely have to be CPAs, I guess, but they could be private accountants. So you still have private accountants, public accountants, certified public accountants. So I don't know which ones will work. I guess they work for, you know, I guess it depends on which ones they hire for their, for their organization, for their corporation. So, but, um, so I think that was it. Uh, I think that was it for the day class. So, um, and my last, my previous uh video, I had a whole lot of different brands that I had. I did research on a whole lot of different brands, and I did research on different types of accounting. Uh, I ran across uh forensic accounting, uh, uh different ones, cost accounting, forensics accounting, uh, uh. As we know, managerial accounting, uh, financial accounting. Um, so those were some very interesting uh, terms that I came across. And branding, I had about 50 different brands, different types of brands that I came across. And um, so I came across branding, uh, co-branding, uh, rebranding, uh, this is a whole lot of them. I don't have my list right now, but they were some very interesting uh, terms. Uh, but I think that's all for the day class. And I want to say thanks for joining me today. And I uh, really appreciate you listening to my, um, my, my lectures on uh, accounting. I have me some, still have me some uh, blueberries. Um, mm -hmm. So... And I have on. Um, um, I thought I would do something different today. Did a little bit of counting at the end. And uh, I thought I, I wanted. I thought it would be appropriate for me to uh, do some blueberry. Okay, last time. Um, and my greens I was eating on. I finished those. Yeah. Oh, it's my, um, and I thought it was appropriate for me to talk about, um, corporate culture, because I have been talking about, um, accounting, and I know that just to talk about accounting, you can't talk about accounting without talking about business, because most businesses have to, um, uh, have a corporate have a uh yeah a corporate accounting department i guess depending on how big your company is if you have a big company you have a, a multinational company like kmart target walmart now i know they have accounting uh departments so corporate culture is something that should be talked about so i thought that i said why not touch base on a little bit corporate culture and i said this is what this is the first thing uh, let's talk corporate culture, corporate culture, and because uh, that's very, very important. Because how in the world are you going to make your company and your brand explode without having positive corporate corporate culture? So how are you going to how are you going to do business? How are you going to uh, improve your brand? How are you going to build your brand? How are you going to um, create um, 
positive, uh, create a positive uh, product? How are you going to create a pro positive working environment without looking at corporate culture? And um, so I think that's all for the day class. And I want to say thanks for joining me. And so think about this. What's normal in your corporation that you're working around? What is normal behavior? So a lot of times uh, some companies, things may happen and sometimes they let it go. It becomes a norm within that organization. But if it's not positive, it shouldn't be uh, just looked at and turn your head and say, hey, oh, that happened, you know, because it's going to keep on happening and keep on happening. If it's not positive, and that's part of your co corporate culture. So you have to create positive corporate culture. And we are, you know, ethical behavior. Do employees respect one another? Respect one another. Do employees do um uh no? Do do employees respect one another? Behaviors, your values, your beliefs. In other words, your religion and all that comes under that. Our, our managers are uh, leading, innovating, and succeeding in a proper way. Are you creating a culture that uh? In other words, is it's, it's, it's legal, ethical, legal. You don't want to create a culture within your corporation or your organization that you create the, you create a, the wrong culture that's not, you know, people not following ethics and then you just, you know, then the corporation just let things go on and, um, excuse me, just let things go on and before you know it, it becomes the norm. Say, oh, that, you know, that happens all the time, so it's normal with us. Within our corporation and our organization and our corporate culture, that's normal. So, but if it's unethical, it shouldn't be normal. So, I'm going to end on this note today, class, and say thanks for joining me today. And I really did enjoy the technological trends that I did my research on, but I'm going to do some more research on this. And um, so, Uber driving this cars. And they have to be careful sometimes because they could crash, you know, driverless cars. So Google has some driverless cars and uh, Uber. And uh, so that's the new tech. So I'm going to be doing more uh, research on technology. So I'm going to say I'm going to close out on this note today, class, because that's 57 minutes. Uh, 57 minutes. And I want to say thanks for joining me today. And I'll see you on my next video. And I'm going to try to do some more research on corporate culture. I'm going to get some more. I want to provide you all with some more technolo technological uh, trends in, a, in this world. In, well, in 2020. So I assume that there are so many trends uh, that, that's probably going to come about. 2020. So I want to say thanks for joining me today. My accounting course, my accounting channel. Uh, I will be offering more than accounting. So I'm just, you know, just getting started, getting my research together and uh, on different topics. So if you have any interest, any concerns about anything, you can uh, comment below and subscribe to my channel. And um, I don't know what I'm saying. Um, this blueberry, um, these are good for cooking. But, so, okay, um, I'll see you next time on my next video. So, you all have a good one. Okay, take care.